Hallelujah. Lord God, thank you for life, God. Thank you for health, Lord God. For Thank you for good health and thank you for strength, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you would touch the hearts of your people, Lord God, that you would minister to them, God, like you minister to me, God. You're so powerful. You're so all-knowing. You're so magnificent, Lord God. And I just play, praise you and I bless you, God, for everything that you've done, everything that you're about to do. God, exceedingly abundantly, I feel that, that you are going to bless us, God, exceedingly abundantly, God, more than we can ask or think, God. Not of just the carnal things, not of just the physical things, God, but the spiritual things, God, but the emotional, the mental, Lord God. Do signs, wonders, and miracles in the minds of your people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Pray, God, that your people are blessed by this word, God, that they will hear it with their heart, God, and that they'll be able to digest it, Lord God, and live by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In your time of singleness, there are a few factors that we must consider. Those who are saved, of course. First, let's identify what does it mean to be saved. The Bible says in Acts 16, 30 through 31, a man asked John, sir, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus went to the cross for you as the lamb who was slain for our sins, that we may be saved. He didn't go to the cross for us to be perfect, but perfected through him. Understand that your belief system is one of the most precious tools you have because for one, it presents the perspective that you have on your life and others. Many people say that they are saved, but then you have those who think too highly of themselves and then those who don't think enough of themselves. Can you just tell yourself, find your balance? Sometimes you have to look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Look at yourself and say, find your balance. In the midst of finding your balance, you have to realize that you cannot be so deep that you are no earthly good, but still be serious about the things of God. In order for you to have a successful balance, you have to manage what is being deposited and what is being debited from your bank account. I'm not talking about Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Navy Federal, or whatever bank you have, but I am talking about your spirit and your soul. In John 3, the Apostle John addresses the traveling teachers and evangelists in his letter saying, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. John is trying to encourage them because they had been mistreated. It doesn't feel good when you are trying to find your balance and then there is some ragamuffin trying to tear you down. How are you going to prosper if someone keeps giving you a bad check that you're trying to cash, but it keeps bouncing because it has insufficient funds? Ask yourself, the lies of the enemy, what about those? Are they insufficient or are they legitimate? No, you need to look at yourself in the mirror again and say, those lies are insufficient. Insufficient means lacking of adequate power. You have to understand that the things that the devil and your hater says about you are insufficient because they do not line up with what God says. I know you have had some people that have said and done some horrible things, but will you allow it to be deposited or will you politely return the check? Look at someone and say, I'm going to return the check. 
Finding your balance has everything to do with knowing who you are in God and knowing how to deal with life. There are certain things that you need to consider. How to cope with stress. How do you manage your time? And who is in your circle? Because honestly, your circle is your support system. First Peter 2 and 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who have called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. So if that is what sustains you, why are we allowing the enemy to waste our time and deposit insufficient funds? Everybody's always talking about, I just want to be successful. But what are you trying to do to pursue that success? The things that should be deposited are the things that God says about you. Even your thoughts need to line up with God's will. Unfortunately, being single causes us to daydream about what life would be like when we get married. But the songs of songs says to not awaken love before it's time. Songs, Songs of Solomon 8 and 4 says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up nor awaken my love until he well pleases. To awaken means to arouse from sleep, cause to stop sleeping. But because of our human nature, there are some feelings and desires that need to stay asleep until it's time. The book encourages us to trust God with your love life. God knows that you're single. If he wanted you married, you'll be married by, by now. In the Songs of Songs, it also talks about a man and a woman's love, but it emphasizes how powerful love is and how it needs to be controlled despite the passion, longing, and the anticipation. These three characteristics of love can have so much power over a person. That power can be used in used in a positive way and a negative way. We are we as single save people have to learn that the power of love can cause us to arouse passions and do things that we just will regret. Think about it. Love is so powerful that God sends his son to demonstrate it through his life, his death, and his resurrection. One of the things that I want to ask you is what are you being passionate about that can hinder your success in your singleness? Singleness is not a time that we sit and daydream about marriage or love because that then that became, becomes our focus. We should focus our minds on Christ, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, 8, and 9. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So as a saved single person, you need to understand and to learn to do the work of your father and to enjoy it and get your life. One thing that I love to say is that experience is not the best teacher. Obedience is. There are certain things that attaches itself to you when you experience it rather than walking in it obedience and excelling without the extra baggage let's wear our options here if i give you rules all you have to do is follow the rules seems pretty easy right but for some of us instead of reading and adhering to the directions we think that we can do it all ourselves and think we will get the same results unfortunately we won't Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans 
I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You don't have to figure things out all by yourself because God sent you a comforter and he has given his word. Many times I've tried to figure things out on my own, but it wasn't the right way. God's grace has really held me through it. But if I had to had just been obedient, there are certain things that I would not have to deal with. In your singleness, focus on your spiritual, mental, and physical well-being so that when it comes your time, you won't drive your spouse away. You feel me? I think a lot of us actually deal with the residue of our mess and try to blame it on other people. We try to blame it on the devil. We try to blame it on, oh, maybe this is what God just wanted to happen. No, you're dealing with the consequences of your own mess. And that's why I came to speak to those today who feel like they have messed up or failed in their Christian singleness let me remind you that when we when Jesus went to the cross he did it just for you the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed God, right now, we put a demand on your healing power. Father God, we know and we understand that it is only you that can heal the scabs that we've covered up with bandages. It's only you, God, that can heal the things, God, that we try to hide on a daily basis basis God it's only you that have the power the supernatural power to heal it as if nothing was there God we pray God that you would remove the residue right now in the name of Jesus we speak signs wonders and miracles God we speak signs wonders and miracles God may you dwell in the midst of everything that we have going on right now God because where you dwell God where your presence dwell God there's healing God there's deliverance Lord Jesus and we thank you in advance for just resting on us and we call it done In the name of Jesus, amen.